Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this talk on brewery accounting, somewhat flippantly titled Standard Schmandard. And what we're going to talk about today are you know, inventory costing methods, uh, somewhat in general, and then also specific to the brewing industry. So get ready. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do a little bit of an introduction and compare and contrast, uh, you know, specifically uh, what we're going to define as standard costing as compared to actual costing. Uh, you know, kind of go into the setup and maintenance of, of each method uh, for, you know, running your, your business. Um, I'm going to highlight a few specific scenarios uh, that, that could come up in the brewing industry and how um, you know, each, each costing method might handle that. And then kind of finally, I'll, I'll arrive at the whole point of uh, you know, what, what, uh, what I and we recommend. Um, speaking of I and we, um, my name is Andrew Coring. I am the head of product for um, Crafted ERP. Um, and, you know, the company, the Crafted ERP is our product, our company is Doozy Solutions. We work very specifically with um, beverage manufacturers, um, mostly alcohol, but we have a few non-alc. Um, but, you know, across brewery, winery, distillery, um, small to large, U.S. international, um, a lot of people with industry experience on staff, as well as, um, you know, the software industry or the accounting industry. Um, so, we see a lot of different types of businesses. We get a lot of different requirements uh, and we see how these things shake out. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think we've got a good, a good background on making some recommendations. Um, you know, one, one little caveat I'll throw out there is that we are built on NetSuite. So kind of throughout my talk, if I'm talking about how a specific costing method works, I'm really referencing how it works, particularly on the NetSuite platform. Now, a lot of that's pretty generic, but there, you know, if you know of a difference, that might explain it. Um, and you know, the, the reason for this whole talk is that a lot of people bring up standard costing. Um, it's not what we choose. Um, you'll kind of see that this is maybe a little bit of a hit piece on it, but um, kind of hoping to, to get this out there recorded. One, uh, people come to us with questions. We can just point and say, hey, go check this out. Let us know if you still want to go that route. Um, and then also just to share some knowledge with everyone. So kind of getting around to addressing the audience here, um, you know, this is a very accounting specific talk, but you know, I don't wanna be talking to just accountants right now. I am not an accountant. I have been accountant adjacent for many years, but um, you know, I've also been very heavy on the brewery operations side. And you know, there's sometimes an attitude of, inventory, costing, accounting, let's just let the office take care of that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's a good attitude to have. I think, you know, if you're in production management or really kind of anywhere in operations, you should really have at least some understanding of, you know, how all this is working because dollars matter. And, you know, we are businesses, we need to, to know what's going on, make sure that we can, you know, be sustainable in a, in a financial health um, perspective. Um, and, there's a value to just having anyone kind of understand a little bit about some of these accounting details, because the more you understand it, the more you can ask the right questions, make the right decisions, um, and then, you know, get that feedback yourself or, or participate with other people to do that analysis and improve your decisions and make that a continuous improvement process rather than I'm just going to leave it to the accountants. And, you know, every six months they'll tell me, um, you know, something. Um, let's also talk about, you know, the, the economic conditions for breweries haven't been the most favorable. Um, it's a rough market. Uh, it's a very volatile market. And so, you know, the, the more that we can do to understand what we're doing and, uh, you know, make those better decisions, you know, the, the better we're going to be long term. And really, everyone should be on board. So, just a, a few definitions, some, some introduction to standard costing. Um, I, I pulled this little quote. Uh, from Wikipedia because it, it kind of made me chuckle. Um, you know, standard costing is something that has been around for a hundred years. Um, and so we're going back to when, you know, your general ledger maybe weighed 20 pounds and, you know, a, a, a whole tree had to be sacrificed for it. Um, you know, that was a very different um, environment in terms of businesses and technology. Um, and so, you know, standard costing to me is really that. It's, it's just this legacy method that 
a lot of people got trained on, um, can be easy to understand, but maybe doesn't fit, you know, the, the market conditions that we see and the technological options that we have. But anyway, just uh, to kind of further define it, um, with standard costing, uh, raw material inventory and manufactured items are all just kind of assigned what we would call an estimated or planned cost. You know, I am this business, I'm going to say that this, um, you know, this pound of grain costs me this much, regardless of what I actually pay for it. The same thing with manufactured items. Um, you collect all of this together and you can call that a costing version. And so <clears throat> you might have a costing version for a quarter or a year or something like that. Um, the differences between standard and actual get written to a variety of variance accounts. And so it is keeping track of that delta between, hey, I said this was 30 cents a pound and I actually paid 32, but it's not actually following that inventory. It is written to a variance account. Um, and then similarly, you know, I kind of mentioned manufactured items, you know, things that we combine different raw materials into a single good. Um, those are just defined by the standard bill of materials. Uh, you define how that cost rolls up in a standard way. It's not dynamic. Uh, to contrast that, there's a, a method called actual costing. Um, and so in NetSuite terminology and, and how Crafted does this, and, and our recommendation anyway, is that this is a combination of lot numbered and average cost methods. So average cost is you know, all the dollars that you have assigned to a particular item, meaning what you've paid for it, and then in some, we'll, we'll go into some other scenarios of other values that can get added into that. Um, and then you just divide that by the total quantity. So take all your dollars, divide by all your units, you know, you get an average cost. It's pretty straightforward. Um, particularly in NetSuite, um, the costing engine is running, you know, several times a day to recalculate this because you might receive inventory um, that changes that maybe at a different value than you already had on your books. Uh, you might have produced inventory at a different value than you, you already had. So the whole point is that this is constantly recalculating behind the scenes. You don't have to do it. No one has to do it. It's just a, a nature of the, the ERP system. Uh, lot numbered costing is really just a slightly more specific average costing, um, but it allows you to identify that you know, this lot of this item costs this much, compare that to one next to it that could be different. You know, a great example of this is hop varieties. You may have, you know, you obviously likely have different contracts, maybe for the same item, maybe even use them interchangeably, but um, you know, your contract for a particular lot with this one grower is at a different rate. You can reflect that with lot numbered costing. Um, variances do exist uh, when um, you're using average costing, but they're really only for transactional errors. So kind of, you know, I alluded to that costing engine, um, you know, that's just chugging away behind the scenes. But, um, you know, if you've got transactions that are dated inappropriately or someone didn't quite finish a production order in the right way, um, that can create these conditions where NetSuite doesn't know where to put the dollars and it'll write those to a variance. Um, so you still have to be on top of these, but you know, if you're doing your job, if you're putting your transactions in in the right way, you don't really see these. Um, and you know, they do also help highlight when there's a, you know, a, a, something that needs to be corrected. Um, and then um, for assembly items, again, kind of talking about that concept of taking raw materials and turning them into a different good, uh, the way uh, these costing methods function is that you absorb all of those costs into whatever you produce. Um, you know, you're applying labor and overhead dynamically as well. Um, so it's, it's really reflecting the cost of manufacturing. It's not necessarily defined by a standard. So let's take a look at what it takes to set up both of these methods. Um, you know, for the standard cost, let, let's say you're, you know, you want to transition this method or you're doing an ERP implementation, you've got a brand new way to do things. We do that a lot. Um, you have to start from somewhere. And so you have to come up with this initial costing version. Um, and that's like a very 
hefty exercise because you have to look at maybe, you know, all of your historical costs. You have to come up with an estimate of, you know, maybe what your future contracts are. You might try to do a little bit of guessing at what, you know, inflation or, you know, anticipated changes in the freight market. You know, you might have to put in all of that thought to come up with your standard costing version. With the actual costing, you just roll with it. You don't need to define anything. The costs just roll through as they as they come in. Um, talking about maintaining the standard cost version, um, you know that exercise that I just described. In order to um, you know see accurate information reflected in your cost of goods, um, you might have to do that quarterly um, or once a year, twice a year. That's still a very large effort to go and do that. Um, actual costing doesn't have that requirement at all. Um, and then kind of had already alluded to this, uh, those variances in standard costing need to be looked at all of the time. Um, you know, there may be really large ones that need to be addressed and you need to revalue inventory. Otherwise, um, you know, you're, you're going to be operating for, you know, three or four months with very inappropriate costing. Um, conversely with actual costing, those variances are really just, hey, this transaction needs to be corrected and then everything recalculates, it flows through. In terms of how we um, use these methods day to day, um, you know, what you'll see with a standard costing is because you're defining a standard, your margin on your, you know, let's say finished goods items, for example, uh, are really gonna be pretty constant uh, because you've defined how much it costs you you know, likely your revenue is pretty set, um, you know, according to, you know, what you sell to retail or distributors. So uh, those margins don't really change. What you do have to monitor is that are those variances, which kind of talked about a couple of times. Um, with actual costing, you have to get used to the idea that your margins are dynamic. Um, and so you're just kind of monitoring, you know, those as you go through time. Um, and so, you know, in, in my mind, that actually reflects reflects reality, and so uh, you know that's that's a good thing. But you know maybe that's a a, a shift in in how people need to think about it. Um, this feedback cycle on standard costing is is going to be a little slow because of all that analysis that's involved. Um, doesn't really provide you know week to week you know easy to access information. Um, Whereas with actual costing, again, like everything is flowing through nearly instantaneously. There's no, you know, the review period is really whenever you want to go look at it. You don't have to do this bulk analysis of variances. Um, you know, standard really relies on a lot of assumptions. And so, um, you know, it uh, really requires that things are somewhat steady state. Otherwise, you're constantly chasing these variances. You're constantly doing this reevaluation. Re um, you know that just doesn't really feel like the world that we're living in right now. Actual costing is just going to roll with it, and it's just going to show you, um, you know, how your costs are changing based on every condition that that affects them. All right, so let's jump into a couple simple scenarios. Um, let's talk about landed costs. So, you know. Just the concept of landed costs is that you can absorb, um, you know, different expenses into the actual value of your inventory. So freight's a very common one. Maybe you have import fees that, you know, you associate with, you know, international sourced goods. Um, with standard costing, these are just going to be written as variances because they're not, they're variable. They're not standard. You know, you, you may have one item that... Um, has you know a certain freight contract or you're, you've got to deal with that uh, supplier, but maybe the same item purchased elsewhere uh, doesn't have that. And so you have to pay extra. Um, that's not standard. So a variance is created. Uh, in the actual costing model, uh, what you're paying for freight or import or all of these um, actually get written into the value of what you've received. And then it follows through all of the production. So you know, if your freight costs change downstream, you would see uh, the, the that margin, or at least your freight costs increase. You'll see that margin on your eventual finished goods shrink a little bit, um, and you know you can see that and respond to it. So I'm going to declare that you know actual costing is the winner on that one, 
because you know you have that feedback to see a, you know a very quick result in your cost of goods sold. Maybe you respond to that by trying to negotiate for better freight. Maybe you respond to that by trying to you know plan your shipments more efficiently to take advantage of bulk you know like full truckloads. Another scenario that's pretty common in the brewing industry is uh, that the yields are variable. Um, you know, every brew, um, you know, could come out different because the raw materials are a little bit off, or maybe um, you, you've got a piece of equipment that's just kind of slowly not functioning quite as well, and so your temperatures are off, or you know, the, the water balance is a little weird. Um, that it's just a reality of beer production is that you know yields are never constant. Um, standard costing makes that assumption. Uh, so again, variances get created and you have to trace those back to, um, you know, why that is. Um, whereas, you know, with actual costing, you know, you use the same amount of goods to get a, a smaller amount of, of finished product. That finished product is going to be more expensive per, per, on a per unit basis. And you can see that and trend on that um, you know, and, and, and get very responsive because you have that ability to do, um, do this analysis, even, you know, per production order, um, you know, average costing is going to over time, um, you know, all of your inventory gets averaged out. That's the way it works. But, um, with the right reporting, you can look at, um, what that estimated margin per production order would be. So if you really wanted to, you could get into, you know, statistical process control on that costing and understand if you're starting to trend, you know, outside of a, a good band, a good threshold. So, um, you know, I'm going to declare actual costing the winner on that one again. Um, you know, brewing is very easy to standardize uh, when, you know, you're fully omniscient. Um, otherwise, there's just too many realities that have to be accommodated. So, you know, I would say, um, it's just not a, a standard thing unless you're maybe at the very, very macro scale. Uh, one last scenario to take a look at here is when we do a bill of materials changes. Um, you know, it's just something that happens. Um, maybe you were a little short and needed to, you know, borrow a substitute item. Um, you know, the, the, the production schedule changes. And so you have to, to shift some things around just to kind of, you know, take best advantage of your, your warehouse or maybe just for the hell of it, you wanted to, to throw something in there. Um, probably not that surprising given the theme of things so far, that's just gonna become a weird variance that doesn't flow through to the actual cost of what you're making. Um, whereas with actual costing, uh, you're, you're gonna see that regardless of what the bill of materials or what the standard is. So um, you know, this is something that we encounter a lot with our, our smaller customers that you know are, maybe rotating a little bit more or, um, you know, they don't have the flagship model as much. And so things can be a little bit more dynamic. Um, you know, standard costing just really doesn't make sense in that scenario. All right, finally gonna get towards wrapping things up. Um, you know, I, I think standard costing has a lot of limitations, especially in a, a dynamic production environment. Um, while actual costing, may require a little bit more frequent review of, you know, checking for errors and variances and monitoring, um, you know, how your costs, your, your, your actual costs of goods sold are changing. Um, that is good information to be getting in that review. Um, the, the combination, especially of average and lot numbered costing um, gives you very high resolution on understanding, um, you know, how, you know, maybe you use a specific expensive lot of the same item in one beer and, and the other one uses a different lot, um, you know, you'll see the costing shake out between those two beers because of the lot numbered contribution. Um, one, one thing I also want to point out is that under the, the actual costing method, you can still assign a, a, a target or, you know, quote unquote standard cost to an item the actual costing engine isn't going to use that value, but you can still use that in your reporting and still easily get a, you know, we want this to be, you know, we want this case to cost us $12 to produce. 
Um, but, you know, like that per production um, run analysis I was talking about, or even just looking at your average cost transactionally every day, you can look how your, your, your actual cost is trending against that target. Um, and then finally, um, you know, NetSuite does this actual costing really well. Um, I took a little screenshot of one of my favorite features, and it's the edit button. Um, you know, again, highlighting the idea of beer production can be very dynamic. Um, someone might fat finger in a quantity or, you know, enter the wrong cost when something is received. Um, that whole landed cost thing, you can do that after the fact. Uh, maybe your, your freight bill shows up, you know, a day or two after something actually hits your dock. Um, you know, the way that NetSuite does this costing allows you to go in and make those changes. All of that flows through your uh, manufacturing. So, um, you know, it really allows you to capture how operations run and see that in, you know, the actual cost of goods sold, see that in your margin, um, you know, and, and, and understand if your business is heading in the right way. So um, I'll leave a little bit of time for any questions. Um, while I'm kind of checking on those, um, I will highlight that, you know, if you're, if you're watching the recorded version of this, please reach out and um, hit us with any questions that you have about um, costing, um, or, or just ERP in general, or if you want to talk about beer, we do a lot of that. Um, you know, I do see one question here. Um, you know, someone did ask about, you know, there are, there are some other costing methods that I didn't address today. Um, you know, first in, first out, last in, first out. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting one, but, um, you know, generally those are um, not something that we use, um, they don't even really come up as questions as well. So, um, you know, if you do want to um, ask some questions about that, I might refer you to um, some of the members on our team who are actual accountants and can talk more about that, uh, but uh, happy to, to answer any questions. So with that, I'll say thanks for uh, your attention and have a great day.